Oh, we don't have something interesting, but I will tell you what is interesting is that we took a break. Well, not a break, but we sat purposely trying to sort of hope that he would call again and maybe walk kind of down towards the dam and then we could just come from one of these thickets and just come out and peer and just see him. But I think that this leopard was watching us sitting on a log because all three of us were sitting in a row on a log because he was on the sort of our western side and then as right now when james was just coming across the dam wall he called directly behind us but not far like 50 meters and so i think he saw us and just crept behind us and just went into the bush which is somewhat sort of sobering and scary at the same time particularly because it's now starting to get rather dark out here but it just goes to show you I and mean, you've got to be aware of what's going on all the time but james hopefully will find him he's really close to where we were and hopefully we can have a situation ah there we go so james apparently has found him so off you go we'll see you all tomorrow morning Well, I'd love to say I found Tingana. There are at least three or four people who deserve credit here. First of all is Herbert and Tristan, of course, who heard him calling, pointed us in this direction, said, come this way. And then, of course, unfortunately, I must regretfully give credit to jean Ray, who saw him, because I drove straight past him. And so my shame is enormous, uh, mostly, of course, because I have to give jean Ray um, credit, which hurts my heart to the core of its being. Go ahead, Herbert. I'm sorry, Herbert. Thank you very much, Herbert. I appreciate very much all the efforts that you made. Herbert has told me on the radio to say thank you to him. <laughs> he calls me on the radio. He says, come in. Uh, go ahead, <laughs> say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, would you tell them on the radio, please, that I was publicly thanking them, that I was so overwhelmed by their brilliance. He's just giving a little bit of a growl there. That was interesting. Look at his ear. I haven't seen that ear that sort of sideways before. So I'm going to move slightly. This cat does not look very comfortable to me. Just slightly uncomfortable. I'm not sure why that should be the case. It could be because he knows the bushwalk was following him. And that one floppy ear makes me wonder if he hasn't had a little fight, perhaps. There we go, that's got out of his field of view there. Is that right, John Drew? I'm just going to watch him carefully. He's got something wrong with that ear. There's no blood. But he just let out a rather angry growl. There we go, you see him seems to be relaxing slightly now. If he has had some kind of fight or some kind of contact with another leopard, it will have his, you know, his blood will be up. So he will not be particularly pleased. And that means that anything that will irritate him will, will set, you know, anything that sometimes might irritate him will set him off completely. He's calling now. Uh, apparently Tristan says he caught a warthog yesterday and maybe that's what got his ear. That's quite possible. It's gorgeous. I'm listening to the fact that there are three leopard sightings at the moment, and it seems like Guchava is on Torchwood.
Oh, sorry, I'm just listening to the radio, everybody. Okay, we're going to go to infrared, everybody. Rex is a little two track where there was a kill um, going east of the road. He's just on that. Right, so he's calling. That's a territorial call, in case you were wondering. He's obviously been doing that for a while because that's what led. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh, that's not nice to see. That's really not ideal. Killed a warthog yesterday, apparently. I don't know what's happened to him. It's not nice to see because obviously he's not going to kill anything with it like that. I wonder if he killed a warthog yesterday. I think the fact that he's not with that warthog now tells me that somebody, something, stole it from him. That's why his head's looking so lopsided. Yeah, and we had, we had all those hyenas this morning. I wonder if that wasn't what injured him. Oh, this is really not nice to see. I mean, I don't mean to be alarmist, but he's, he's done so well to get to this stage. And if I feel like if he was to meet his demise because of a fight with hyenas, it would just be a hugely unjust thing. Now, let's not all panic like I'm panicking, basically, because, of course, it's entirely possible that he'll be completely fine, that he, he, he's been injured plenty times before, and, you know, he's got through it. Let's go around the side of him there, John Dree. Let's see if we can get a better view of his face. It's definitely why that ear's like that. He's been smacked up. I think Tristan's right. We had the hyenas making a huge noise earlier on. Today, early morning, when we were out with the thermal drone, we found the hyenas. We didn't find what they were eating. We didn't find what they were making such a noise about. We did, certainly didn't see him on the drone, though. I don't think. It's very difficult to see what you are looking at on that thermal, thermal drone. like seeing that, I must say. Hold on, Tosh, everyone. And of course, Tingana is not a fan of being seen on foot, so I wonder if he didn't see the bushwalk as well. Have you got that, Jondry? Is that all right? Yeah, good. What a relief. Andre says it's okay. <laughs> Carl, I've got no way of knowing, I'm afraid. We as guides love to play vet vet. 99% of the time we're completely incorrect as to the extent and severity of their injuries. And I just remember very clearly, well, the greatest example was one of the Inkahuma cubs who was injured at a buffalo kill. And I shall mention no names, but uh, it was everybody just about came in and said, that cub's done for, it's broken its back, its third thoracic vertebrae has been severed, it's, oh no, its hips displaced, 
it's broken its hip, no, it must be the rear femur. I mean, everyone knew exactly down to the last medical detail what had happened to the cub, and everyone was certain, without a shadow of a doubt, that it was going to die. Well, three days later, it was absolutely fine. And in fact, probably still lives with the, still lives with the pride. So, you know, I don't know. Could be as little as a scratch, it could be as much as something broken. Anyway, Sydney is still with his consort. Let's go across to him. Yeah, I've got Tandy again now. It's just that uh, Tandy decided not to finish up with her hunting activities. So she's now um, away from the impalas. She is by herself. Uh, I'm going to follow her now and see her uh, next plan. So the initial plan, uh, it was not executed. So you can see now she's, she's trying to uh, give out her scent marks. And she's trying to sniff the... Beautiful, eh? So she is right in her territory. She knows very well that uh, the head of Impalas we thought earlier belongs to this territory. So she will manage to get one of them. But not today. I can see that she is just trying to uh, sniff the leaves there. So all she's doing is about a uh, scent marking now. Slowly going back to the road now. So I'm just gonna uh, keep following and following and see uh, any developments. So now let's uh, head back to James. He's got uh, Tingana for us. Right, well, there he is. He's not moved at all. He's replaced. No, he's re remained, is the word that I was going for there, on his termite mound, where he can see what's going on. But it would be very interesting to know. We're going, we're going to flick between the thermal camera and the infrared camera. And so you'll see various pictures of him. But it would be very interesting to know also why his ear is so droopy. As if, you know, I don't know. I hope there hasn't been some kind of neurological damage. Maybe it's just been bitten very badly. I really feel like that were this to cause his end it would be insufficiently grand for a leopard of his stature. What the, I don't know. I didn't see any wound, any obvious wound. Um, he's obviously got something wrong with his foot or with his leg. He's listening to something. It's quite possible he's just been bitten twice, you know, he's been bitten on his ear and bitten on his right leg. So, uh, very difficult to tell what's caused the problem. You know, up until the time that he got so sick, about, oh, when was that uh, time, I can't remember the times these days, three months ago, say, he got very sick. He had a limp, he always had a limp on his left front foot. That limp went away after he had recovered from his illness and now it's the other leg it's the right front that's got a serious issue at the moment now, it is very nice of course that we can swap between these two different pictures it's quite fun This is the infrared light. There's no artificial light on him at all.
Mr. Public, climb a tree. Mm, I think he's going to struggle to climb a tree, to be honest. He's, uh, he'd need both front feet and, you know, his, his shoulders to do it. Uh, so I, I think he'd struggle. You know, if there's no bone damage or ligament damage, if it's just a puncture wound or something like that, he'll he'll get through it. He'll scavenge a bit of food here and there. He'll be able to perhaps eat a tortoise or a terrapin. He's very full already from a lot of food, so it's not like he can't go three or four days without a meal. But, you know, if it's something more severe, like a snapped ligament or something, well... He's going to be in trouble, and I can only think that whatever caught him was very, very stealthy because he is such a careful cat. Mm. He's uh, unlike Tundi, much less sort of the aggressor. Uh, Tandy is now um, trying to investigate something and she's decided to run away. I'm not just sure what is chasing her, but uh, earlier on I have picked up that she heard something coming from the bushes. So we're still going to um, try and follow her and see what she's trying to do. Uh, there she is. You can see that she's a bit concerned about something. And there she is moving slowly with their whole concentration on the right. So maybe she has spotted something so she's gonna show us what is in what is entertaining her now. There was something which, and there's something which uh, definitely ran away here on the right side where they, you can see now she's going. She is definitely after something. She is definitely after something. Yeah, there she is. I can see that now. She, she, she's uh, very much busy and uh, she is going towards the western side. I'm not too sure what uh, is bothering her. You can see there she is stopped again and that she's deciding to move uh, very quickly again. Now she just now disappeared by the tall grass. Just try to see if I'm gonna pick her up again. She just got disappeared somewhere here. Oh, yes, there she is. You can see she's very excited. Uh, something is going on here because earlier on, before her first run, there was some noise coming from the bushes, and then she ran stopped and investigate. So now she's moving, stopping and listening. So her whole concentration is on the right side. I'm, I'm just not sure what is what she's trying to get hold of at the moment. You can see now she's uh, disappearing by those bushes there. She is still highly concentrating to what is going on. So you can see that she's uh, now going deep in the thick bushes where the noise was coming from. So I'm just going to pull forward a little bit and see if maybe we're going to have a better sighting from a different angle. So now, uh, let's move forward and see, maybe we're going to see something.
Let me just have my spotlight on now so that I can see Tandy's eyes shining. Oh, it's a little bit difficult. Maybe she's uh, moving towards the other direction whereby the eyes are facing forward. So now let's head to uh, uh, James. Uh, James has got Tingana. Well, he's doing exactly what he was last time you were with us. Except now he feels like he's on the stage. Shondre, have you ever been on the stage? Oh, didn't you love the feeling of the lights turning on to you? <laughs> Marvelous feeling, yes. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Tingana hasn't moved at all. He hasn't stood up again. I'm going to go with, yes, he will recover. He needs three or four days and that we must give him that space, of course. I don't think he's going to go particularly far from here with that injury, so we might well be able to keep tabs on him. Well, Kathy, he's calling because he's basically advertising that he's still strong and this is his area and keeping people out. It's a, I guess it's almost like a double bluff saying, this is my territory, don't come in here or you'll get swatted. Uh, nobody knows whether he's telling the truth or he isn't telling the truth. And uh, I think it's a very good strategy. What he doesn't want to do is go quiet and try and hide somewhere if he doesn't absolutely have to, because that's going to encourage incursions from the likes of Hukumori and other leopards. And what happened to him when he got sick is that he got uh, very sort of silent. He got completely silent because he was unable to call and mark territory and hunt and it's no coincidence I don't think that Hukumuri invaded from the west during that period so he will want to keep calling for as long as he can I mean up up to today I've never seen this leopard looking better than he does now and unfortunately obviously just let his guard down for one second Oh. Anyway, I hope he's okay. Doesn't look mag. Well, everyone, another safari is drawing to a close now. We have but 20 seconds left together. Tomorrow, I must just say that, of course, our drone tests continue in the morning, so the safari will run from 6.30 to 8.30. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been wonderful having your questions and your comments. Thank you for not insulting me. We will see you tomorrow at 0630.